I've got an interesting wood here that I've never worked before. I'm pretty excited to. It's called Gonacolo Alves, and maybe it's Gonacalo Alves. It's also known as Tiger Wood, and it's uh, supposedly a softer wood. It has some really cool grain pattern to it, so I'm gonna give it a try. <laughs> I've got it down close to its final shape, and I've got to say, first impression of the wood, it's pretty soft, it's very easy to work with. I was able to turn it down to its shape pretty quickly. This is a little bit of a fatter pen, so it's easier to get it to that final shape, but so far I'm liking it. I can see that grain pattern and it looks pretty cool. This is definitely looking pretty good. I'm gonna move up to sanding now. I'm starting at 120 and then removing the tool rest, of course, for safety reasons. Looking good after 120, let's move up to 400. Looking really good with the 400, let's move up to 600. Once you get into these higher grits, like 400 and 600, you need to inspect to see if there's any scratches from the previous grit. So I'm sanding at 600, and you can tell the difference between a 600 grit scratch and a 400 grit scratch. So I'm making sure there's none of these in the finish whenever I finish doing 600, because whenever I move up to 1200, if there's still a 400 grit scratch, I won't be able to get that out. That gloss in the wood is really starting to come out. 1500. For the final grit of 2000, I like to sand with the machine off grain to grain, end to end, and I think it gets me a better finish. With the wood sanded down to 2000, we can apply our cyan acrylate finish, which is really the time consuming part. Now let's apply our CA finish. I would say this applied pretty well. I got nice thin coats on here, which is what you want. I probably put about five thin coats, and then I'm gonna start with 600, sand it flat, and then put more coats on. That looks pretty good. I don't see any white spots. And some of these shiny spots here, those are the low spots, but that's okay, because we're gonna be putting more coats on. That was my final coat, so I'm gonna spin this up, sand it down, get everything flat, and go up to 2000. Now I'll start sanding end to end where I can really get to the points where it needs to be sanded. So with the 600, there's low spots right there, and then some spots where I don't need to sand, I don't need to, and then this is also gonna make it symmetric in this orientation. If you're just sanding while it's spinning, it could make divots in it, so sanding across horizontally will help. Next up is 1200. Next up is 1500. That gloss is really starting to come on the wood. And lastly, 2000. That's amazing, I mean, that's just about all I need to do, but I'm gonna take it over to the buffing wheel and that makes it look like glass. Now, whenever I take these off, I wanna keep their position memorized, just cause I don't wanna 
line up these edges wrong because I have the grain lined up, especially with pens with more prominent grain, I try to keep those lined up so when the pen is closed, the grain still flows. I'll knock off the burrs. Here's the difference between one that's been buffed and one that hasn't. This one has more of a satin finish and this is much, much more of a high gloss. Personally, I prefer that high gloss more. It makes the wood look wet and I really like that. And that finish is something else. I'll just tap off the bushings. Slide in our refill cartridge, thread on the twist mechanism, and the marks that I made to line up the grain, actually now at this point are kind of useless because this is covering the mark and this is covering the mark, but I think I'll just be able to, you know, eyeball it and get the grain to line up that way. Whenever you're lining these up, you want to look for something significant in the grain, like this black line that goes through it, and there's also this white line in the grain that goes through it. So I'm going to line those up and then press it together. Just like that. And here it is finished. I really like how it looks. I like the black accents with this wood. I think it complements it very well. This is the scrap I have left over and I'm probably gonna use this wood again at some point. It, I only have one piece of it, but it was actually really easy to work with. I've heard that it can be kind of fragile or um, more brittle but I, I had a good time working with it. It was really easy to turn. I was able to turn it down pretty quickly and it looks really nice.